Welcome back, folks, to a brand new video. South Korea, a country bordering North Korea in the north, China in the west, and Japan in the southeast. Famous for gorgeous landscapes, bustling cities, and actually stunning remote islands. This is a trip worth taking. So let's take a look at 10 beautiful places to visit in South Korea. Number one, Gyeongju. One of the best places to go in South Korea. Often called an open air museum or museum without walls. So if you love history, you're going to really enjoy this location. Gyeongju is a treasure trove of cultural and historical sites, and ruins going back to a thousand years. With the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Pungopsa Temple and the National Museum, which holds an unparalleled collection of artifacts. But this city has more tombs, temples, rock carvings, pagodas, and palace ruins than any other place in South Korea. So it's a lovely city that's absolutely stuffed to the gills with history. Number two, Seoul. Now this is easily up there as one of the best places in South Korea to visit. Not only is it super vast, it's also got a whole heap of history, neighborhoods and influences that are so much fun to explore. You'll see the tall skyscrapers and probably around 600 years Seoul has been Korea's capital city. But it's steeped in history. And this all means that a lot of important historical buildings are based right here, which is perfect to explore for a long weekend away. So once you're here, make sure to visit some of the main places to see in Seoul. Spend some time exploring the neighborhoods that are dotted across the city. And if you can, try to go up the city's iconic observation tower, because the position is almost on top of a mountain. Plus the height of the tower itself gets you almost 500 meters above sea level and the city below so you'll get some fantastic panoramic views but the top highlight here is visiting the Changdokgung palace with its amazing secret garden it's one of the five grand palaces built in the 15th century around seoul and it was always the preferred royal residence where the king and royal family lived their daily lives. So the palace isn't just a single building, it's a complex of buildings, and each served a different purpose. It also boasts a gigantic tree that is at least 300 years old, a small pond and a pavilion. So entry here is a few dollars, and to see the garden, you need to book a guided tour. Number three, Gyeongbokgung Palace. Now this is arguably the most beautiful and it remains the largest of all palaces. It was once destroyed by the fire during the war in the 16th century. However, all the palace buildings were later restored and like a phoenix, Seoul's premier palace has risen several times from the ashes, now commonly referred to as the Northern Palace because its location is furthest north when compared to the neighbouring palaces of Changdokgung Palace. So make sure you take the free guided tour opportunity for deeper info about the palace.
Next up is Puk Tung Hello. Nestled in the middle of Seoul with high-rise buildings and bustling streets is the beautiful and ancient Puk Tung Hanung village. And together with hundreds of traditional houses of simple clay and stone. Now the village embodies a miniature Chosan era in Seoul. So there's no better place for you to learn the long history and stories and the bold colors of Korean traditional culture than this village. So coming here, you can spend some time even visiting the nearby monuments and the interesting palaces that we mentioned earlier, such as Changdeokgung Palace. A wonderful area to visit. Number 5. Keitu Island Located just off the south coast of the country, this stunning island just 85 kilometers off the coast is one of the most beautiful in South Korea, and one of the most famous places, having been voted as one of the new seven wonders of nature. The pristine beauty of the island will take your breath away. And what you will find here is surreal white sand beaches that's surrounded by pine forests, volcanic craters, and even lava caves. It's long been the country's favorite domestic holiday and a very popular honeymoon destination, thanks to those beautiful beaches. So with a natural paradise like this, it will be hard to miss on your next trip to South Korea. Number 6. Busan The second largest city in the entire country. It's also a major port and known for having those opportunities for a little bit of the outdoors. You can visit Busan's Gamchan cultural village, known as the Santorini of Korea. And that's because it's due to the sunsets. But Busan is one of the best places to visit in South Korea, due to its location as it's perched on the southeast coast, and a great spot to visit if you want just a little bit of city life, but also to embrace the amazing beaches and mountains, so you have pretty much everything you need. So once you're here, make sure you visit busy Heyonde Beach. And if you have a little bit more time, take a trip to the 14th century coastal temple of Heidong Yungungsa. Number 7. Chanju. Now if you're wondering about where to go in South Korea, you've seen a little bit of Seoul, Busan, well maybe Chanju is the answer. During the reign of the Joseon dynasty, the place happened to be the spiritual capital. It still has many temples and museums and is easily one of the best places to know about the rich and fascinating history of the country. So if you are a history buff and you wish to see the traditional homes dating back to the early 20th century, 
then please make sure you stop at Changchou, because I'm pretty sure you'll have a great time. And while you're there, try the famous Korean dish bibimbap, which originally comes from this region. Number eight, Soraksan National Park. Now this destination is located in the northeastern part of South Korea. Now, if you want to go hiking, see the best known mountain range in the country, or just get some epic photos, then make sure you visit this national park. Within the park, you'll find pine forests, jagged and rocky mountain peaks. Beautiful crystal clear streams and stunning lakes. It's also home to over 2,000 animal species, so you can start your visit at the National Park Visitor Center, where you can pick up those free maps in either English or Korean, and you can enjoy miles upon miles of signposted hiking trails that crisscross the entire park. So try to spend the whole day here. Number 9. Ulungdo. Now let's talk about a hidden gem in South Korea, or maybe underrated gem around the world. This island is like a natural masterpiece smack in the sea of Japan, just off the eastern coast of the country. So imagine lush forests, dramatic cliffs and landscapes that were practically painted by Mother Nature herself. And did I mention the crystal clear blue water? So if you're looking into hiking, bird watching, if that's your thing, or even just soaking up the coastal beauty, this is the spot you need to head to. You can hop on a ferry from the mainland, and after visiting all the cities if you have the time, this could be the perfect respite. Number 10. Angdong. Now located in the city of Angdong, nestled amidst a picturesque natural setting, Jongsang Siwon showcases traditional Korean architectural design, and it blends nicely with its surroundings. It's actually not so far away from the famous Haho village. So visiting allows you to step back in time and gain all the insights into the cultural pursuits of scholars during the Chosan dynasty. And there you have it folks, that was the beautiful South Korea. There are still so many places still to be found, still to be shown, such as Nami Island and Suncheon, so stay tuned and one day I will make part two. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all on the next one. As always, be good, be kind and be careful. Peace!